We've got a lot of important 2K25 news to get into, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. I'm not here to waste y'all's time, man. Drop a like on this video if you support one of the only creators that's gonna give you their actual opinion on this news, and let's get right into it. So, Wolf, a former 2K League professional turned into 2K developer who works on the Builder starting last year had this to say about the Builder this year. For all my guards out there, be open to using a smaller guard in 2K25. Smaller guards will have more attribute points to work with. You will also have access to the new badge, Mini Marksman. Personally, I've been enjoying playing on a small guard. Typically, 6 foot to 6 foot 2 is the height I make my small guards. Obviously, height will always have great benefits, but don't sleep on the smaller, quicker guards in 2K25. Now, do not think that he's just one of those 2K League cheesers that wants to make the smaller builds bigger because he was a lockdown in the 2K League. I just think they don't want to see any builds that are just so much better than the other ones at one specific height or one specific position. So I'm excited to always see something like that because we don't want a repeat of 2K21 next gen where the builder is cooked from day one as soon as we see that, what was it, power forward 6'7 or 6'9 that was just not even close to any other builds and that just destroyed the game right there. Now, are there changes to the total amount of attribute points in the My Player Builder? Each year, the overall rating system in My Career goes through a massive overhaul. Across the board, we're always looking to maximize ways for players to make fun and unique builds while also preventing metas and demigods from sneaking through the cracks. While there are literally hundreds of thousands of different My Player possibilities out there, we've created more tools that pull out the outliers, thus allowing us to increase the flexibility and the numbers of attributes a user can apply to their player. In the end, and in almost all cases, if you recreate a build from 2K24 and 2K25, you'll end up with a lower overall that leaves room to allow you to pump in some more attributes. Now, that's very important and we will talk about that in a second, but anyway, I got a question to ask everyone watching the video. Do you all work out, like go to the gym? If you don't know, I'm very into health. I had a good year as you guys see on the screen in the gym, man. And ever since I found Factor, the sponsor of today's video, it has helped me reach my goals much easier. Factor delivers you fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. You can choose from over 35 different meals you want to eat per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan plus veggie, and my favorite, of course, protein plus. Factor meals help me eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. You simply heat and savor the good stuff. Now, with 2K25 coming out, I know y'all are going to want something like this when gaming, where most food they deliver to your door can be cooked in two minutes. Now, Factor is owned by HelloFresh, who I've worked with before, but I've been trying Factor recently, and I have no idea why I waited so long. Head over to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code BADGEPLUG50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next month of orders. That's code BADGEPLUG50 at Factor75.com to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month of orders. All right, look, we have a lot more important stuff to talk about, but I do want to go over that picture real quick where it was saying that they don't want demigods in the game obviously because then people are just going to make one build they're not going to make as much money the community is not going to be as happy it's a win-win for both of us for there to be a lot of variety in the build system but they also talked about having more attributes in 2k25 than in 2k24 now from the one screenshot we have seen so far of an actual put together build we know that's true, at least for a six foot two, you know, 100, what was it, 184 pounds, 186, that you're able to get more attributes on a build like that. Now, we haven't seen the other builds, so that's why I want to say that, but they are confirming once again that it is like that in the game, and that's also without the cat breakers, uh, what is it, the badge elevator. So we're going to see a lot of interesting stuff with the builder this year, and if it's going to be broken or whatever it is, if people are able to make demigods with the cat breakers. But I do like how you're also able to go up on certain badges with the elevators or whatever it's called. So you're able to get a at level 15 in the season. If you guys don't remember, you're able to go up on your tier two badge up one tier because there's two tiers of different badges guys if you don't remember there's tier one and tier two and then when you hit level 30 that's how you're going to get the tier one to go up so there's going to be a lot of interesting ways to create a build this year depending on how much you grind the game of course i don't think that all the attribute caps are going to be too hard to get i think that there's probably going to be some further close you know closer to legend 
but there's also going to be some pretty early on, so that's going to be interesting as well. But what I'm saying is there's going to be some builds where you're going to purposely miss out on a badge. Let's say, for example, this year, we know that Hall of Fame Posterizer is not really worth it compared to gold, right? Like the points you have to put into the builder, and I've made two different videos on it, explaining it, showing it, all that type of stuff, is just not worth it compared to what you get for gold posterizer. So there's going to be some builds where you purposely miss out on Hall of Fame posterizer and then you get gold so that you can go over and use that elevator, whatever. I forgot what it's called. I'm pretty sure it's the elevator and you're going to be able to get up to Hall of Fame. So you're not going to spend those attribute points to get the badge, but you're going to use your thing that you unlock to get it. The same way with attribute caps where you're going to purposely miss out on like an animation or a badge and then use the attribute caps to get it due to the fact that you would be saving a lot of points in the builder because let's say for example you wanted to go from 91 driving dunk to 93 this year that's pretty expensive in the builder now what i'm talking about expensive i'm not talking about bc which it is uh but i'm saying just the attribute the the overall that your player goes up when you go from 91 to 93 is usually gonna be usually gonna be like one or two overalls just for those two points it's not gonna go up two, two overalls when you go from 65 post control to 67. So although you could do that in the cat breakers, you could go from 65 to 67 in the post control, which is super cheap this year, you're not gonna want to do that. You're gonna wanna use it on the expensive attributes to be able to kinda cheese the builder. That's the only word I have for it. It's not really cheesing the builder, but you get what I'm saying, okay? I'm not saying actually breaking it or whatever, but it honestly could. It could, we could figure out later on, you know, if you have a legend build or something like that, you've hit legend, you've earned the, what is it, 15 attribute cap breakers, it might be kind of glitchy. But of course, you're not going to see a lot of people with that if it's very hard to get anyway. Anyway, I just wanted to break that down for you guys. So, our question right here is, can other people see if you have cap breakers? Yes, the cap breakers show up in 2K cards, the attributes menu, etc. So, you're not going to be able to hide anything once again this year. There's no longer any complaints. There should never be complaints again about YouTubers posting build videos or, you know, their dribble moves or anything like that because you can literally load up or lose to someone in the park, let's say, for example. Look at their player card. You can see all their animations except their jump shot. I think because custom jump shots don't show up. So you can see all their animations. You can see their exact build. All you're doing is saving people time from having to search up a YouTuber's name or someone they lost to or a build they thought was interesting that they might want to use and then have to go into their park and screenshot it and look at the screenshot while they're making the build. You know, if you want to make someone's build, make someone's build, bro. It's not a big deal to me and there shouldn't be any excuses anymore about that. Anyway, what happens when your takeover expires? Takeover is quite different than what you've been used to. It's really a hot slash cold meter that flows up and down based on how you're playing. There are no significant gains or drops to the meter. I thought that was very interesting. When level five expires, your takeover ability expires and you simply drop back to level uh, four uh, about the halfway point between four and five. This is the same for each level you drop out of. If you drop out of four, you go to the halfway point of three and four and so on. So in the last video, there's two things that I read wrong throughout this news drop, and that was the gym rat, the stamina that is going to transfer across all builds once you do it. I was pretty upset that you were gonna have to do that across all builds, and we figured that out. And then in the last video, I've read a lot of the comments, I've read it again, and I'm pretty sure the takeovers are only unlocking the level four, the level five, where you have to play 30 games to unlock it. You can play it in my career, whatever it is, the 30 games, because I was complaining like, bro, there's 72 takeovers. You're telling me it's gonna, I'm gonna have to do 30 games for each and every one I want. Apparently, after reading it again, I'm still not 100%, but I'm pretty sure now that it's just for unlocking the level four and level five. So we'll see how that goes. Now, this one is also pretty interesting. Because as it says right here in 2K25, the max heights for each position, PG is going to be six foot seven, shooting guard six foot eight, small forward six ten, power forward seven foot, and of course center is going to be seven foot three once again. So 
you know, take that how you want. They are just not trying to have six foot nine point guards out there, even though I'm pretty sure you can just make a small forward into a point guard. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, let's hop into these badge requirements right here, just in case you guys want to screenshot them or just, you know, keep it in mind that you're going to have to get 97 ball handle for legend handles for days. 97. For Deadeye, we don't know the exactly yet, but gold is going to be 93 at the max. Posterizer Bronze is going to be 73. I'm not sure where they even got these pictures from, but I'm guessing it's from some 2K dropped. 96 ball handle is going to be gold, guys. Or Hall of Fame, sorry. 94 for Lightning Launch. Okay, 94. And then Handles for Days, that once again is going to be 97. So just keep that in mind that you're going to need some pretty high attributes to get these badges. And I think the way 2K25 is going to play out is basically how I was just telling you guys in the stream when the builder was announced, or if you didn't hear it, I said it in the video as well. But I think that, and I also just said a minute ago, kind of, that you're going to want to miss out on things because they're going to be so expensive in the builder and then go up with what you earn, right? You're going to want to just miss out and then get them with the cat breakers in the elevator, the things you unlock in the season passes. I keep calling them elevators. I don't know if they're called elevators. I could be wrong on that, but you guys know what I'm talking about, bro. The thing that makes your badge go up plus one, which actually we see right here. It is called a perk max one when applied to badge. It will boost the badge to its max potential plus one. Example, your build gets a max of a Hall of Fame paint patroller. If you apply max plus one boost to Hall of Fame paint patroller, it will boost the badge to legend level. Max plus one perk will be in the season reward path at levels 50, 15, and 30. At the end of the season, these will reset and you will have to earn the levels via season rewards to get the perks back. You must progress the badge to its max potential first before you are able, uh, able to apply the perk so the badge plus one i don't know why i kept calling it the elevator i guess it's because it was going up in my mind i was like all right we're going up to another badge here but you guys see what i'm saying bro i really think and i've been trying to explain it in just the way that it's played out in my head that you're going to want to kind of try to cheese it but not cheesing right you're going to want to miss out on things you're going to want to on animations for example there could be an animation at let's say 94 driving dunk and you're not necessarily even going for a badge or you know a what's it called a badge or an attribute you're going for an animation this time so now you're gonna like there's three or four different things you can get out of these cat breakers and stuff so it's going to be really important to keep in mind can we choose our jump shot in the build tester when you enter the build tester you will be presented with a screen that is much like the gameplay animations menu in my career you can create a jumper create a dunk style swap animations in and out for every gameplay category we have then you can test in freestyle 3v3 or 5v5 what you do here however is temporary it's simply to test drive what your player could be capable of that said if you find animations you like you can put favorite on them and they'll show up at the top of your list once you enter my career so we already had some information about that but that was actually expanded upon from our last information we got on that i think that's pretty cool that's really cool it's not something that you know probably after september is going to be useful to to me who's like putting a lot of hours into the game but for people that don't have as much time like that's awesome being able to test out your exact build and then favorite it and then when you make the build you're actually able to see them at that screen so you don't forget or you have to take a screenshot whatever it is i think that's a really good idea now I added Zach Timmerman in a tweet, the OG Mike Wing, and I said, I have a question we most likely know, but just want to make sure. For example, 97 three point to 99 is extremely expensive in the builder. Is this a factor with cap breakers at all? Like if I cap break from 97 to 99 three point, is it the same thing as if for some reason I wanted to cap break from 65 post control to 67, which I was just telling you guys about a minute ago and Solo replied and said, it's the same. Now, I told y'all he's got some sort of inside with 2K now. I'm pretty sure you're going to see all these guys at Community Day that are talking about stuff early that were able to get early access, whatever it was. So, yeah, I just wanted to make sure on that before I gave the information. Yes, it is going to be just like that. So, once again, you're not going to, you know, upgrade. Not, you're like this year, if you're making a build on 2K24, you're going to want to go 91 driving dunk and then use your cap breakers to get up to like 93. Or if there's an animation you want at 94, like a dunk package, I can't think of one, but I'm sure there's something at like 94, 95, then you'd go even higher with the cap breakers. But remember, on top of everything that I've said today, you can't go past physical limitations of a build. 
So you can't make a stretch big seven foot three that probably only gets like, I don't know, an 85 three pointer this year maxed out, like with the minimum wingspan possible, and then turn them into a 99 three. Because if you couldn't upgrade it to that before you made the build, before you hit enter, then you can't upgrade past it. So you would make a build this year that can get 93 driving dunk. You could upgrade to it if you drop something else down at the end of your build, right? but you're not going to do it so that you can use the cap breaker. So, but if you make a build that only gets 91, no matter what you did, like let's say it's, I don't know, a six foot guard exactly. I think that a six foot guard, like minimum wingspan or something would not be able to get 93 driving dunk. Let's just say it ended at 91. You cannot cap breaker up to 93 if it was not able to get 93 in the first place, okay? Ah, it's a lot, but it's really not a lot. Like. I don't know, but here's the last one for you guys right here. I thought maybe you'd be interested in this one that 2K added rolled up do rags in 2K25. So, guys, that's pretty much it. Click this video right here if you want to see more 2K25 news all put together. What I think is the most important because you, if you haven't seen this, bro, you're going to be confused when 2K25 comes out. There's just been so much news that you're going to have to see it. You're going to have to probably watch it even twice three times to fully understand it for most people so click it tap it i'm about to be out of here so you might as well like bro why are you still listening to me like all right see ya click it i'm out of here